You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week, each week, stumbling already with <laughs> Easy your for garden you questions. Just what are neighbors talking about? What are other gardeners that we can learn from? What are the questions and how do have we helped them to be better gardeners? So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, it is good to be here. It's kind of nice to take a little break for a second. Yeah. So I think on uh, Tuesday we had like seven semis stacked up down the high. We kind of like, oh, oh my gosh, they weren't all full trucks. It just kind of lots of little, lots of little loads. Lots so, of little lots loads. Of little things going. Makes a lot kind of, of exciting. A lot of plants. You it betcha. does have a lot of plants. So someone came in and said, whoa. Uh, you could put another flower in here. So yeah, that thing you see is going to be gone by the weekend. We'll have to restock. So right. uh, we move a lot of plants this time of year. We do. So what kind Definitely. of garden questions we got? So our first question is from Pam, and this is showing up a lot right now. She says, I have a clear, sticky, sticky substance. Yeah. I can't talk either. On my roses. Is that from aphids? And what is the best treatment? Yeah, clear, sticky. It can be on more than just roses. It could be on pine trees, some kind of apple trees, uh, sometimes peaches, uh, pears. Yeah, peaches. They love fruit trees. Some pine trees are a natural, but different kind of aphid, but it's it's still an aphid. They're related, they're cousins. So yeah, what they, it's called excrement or honeydew is the kind way to say aphid poop poop is out there spewing, uh, giving that glossy thing. They they have a piercing mouth part. They suck the sap out of the new growth of your roses or rose buds, and then they poop out the, the sap as they digest it. And it leaves this residue. It has a shiny, it looks almost wet, mm -hmm. uh, the, where, it's, where it spills down. The rocks underneath your trees can look like, well, did the sprinkler system go off? What's happening? Why is all, it can spot your car. If it's a big ponderosa pine or something, so if you see spots on your windshield or your hood, that's from aphids up in the trees. You should get rid of them. And so what to do? So the internet or, or organic gardeners say, hose them off. I will never give you that advice because you'll be hosing them off every day for like until summer. If you're going to take the time to hose them, add a bug killer. And so this <laughs> time of year, I would say the easiest thing right now, the safest least expensive, least offensive, safest for you, the pets, the dogs, is horticultural oil. Oils are a heavier oil than neem oil. Neem oil is what we use in the summer. Right now, it's cool enough at night where you could actually put on a heavier oil, but to coat their body and just obliterate them and their eggs. Did you know that aphids are the only bug that give live birth? And they lay eggs. It's like they, they go from one aphid to their cover hundreds in like a week. And that's why they're, they're populating like crazy. They're asexual they're too. They're asexual. Don't need a boy and a girl. I got this covered myself. And so they just keep replicating. Mm -hmm. What other tidbits? No, that's it. That's all I got. They do change <laughs> color depending on what they're that's eating. So they can be red and green and black and just they change. Generally, they'll be green. So they take on the same cut. So for Pam, her roses, they're eating the rose to so that stem so they'll be that color because that's what they're eating. They, they take on whatever color that they're eating. So spray them with horticulture oil. I would say cyanara could work. Kind of anything kills an aphid because you got a soft body. Or if you really want to have fun, get a bucket of ladybugs. And here's how you release them. So you take a bucket. So we've got a, like a bucket of 500 ladybugs. And so you take them home that night. You keep them kind of refrigerated. So you want them to be slow. You want to slow down their metabolism. And then at night, you hose down where the aphids are, hose down that rose bush, whatever. And then you release them at night because they're not nocturnal. They only fly around during the day. So you release them at night at the base of the plant. And they're going to go, as they warm up, they're going to go, oh, well, I can't fly right now, but I see this plant. I'm going to start crawling up this thing. And if they stumble across aphids, they're going to stay there until the food source is gone. And as soon as the food source is gone, your aphids are out of there and thrip. Uh, what they'll do is they'll go, okay, I'm still hungry. I'm going to take flight and fly to the next plant. Here's the beauty if you've got kids. Every ladybug that's ever spotted during this next season, you get credit for. 
<laughs> whether they flew in from from like North Dakota or they you get credit because all ladybug you released ladybugs in your gardens. So you're going, oh, I remember that. That's pretty cool. That's great. So ladybugs are fun. So and they are highly effective, but they are they're going to stay right there. They're going to solve your problem right there. And then they're going to move to the next, wherever the food source is. They're ferocious. I think a ladybug can eat 500 aphids. I know it's a lot. But the other thing with the ladybug, so if they lay eggs, the larvae form of the ladybug is actually more voracious than the ladybug itself. So it doesn't look like a ladybug. It looks like a little dragon, dragon, black and orange dragon. But they actually eat more than the official ladybug. So ladybugs. Release ladybugs. Yeah. Pam, come in and get some ladybugs. Or just spray it with some horticultural oil. <laughs> Whichever you choose. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Our both. next question is from Mike. Uh, he wants to know, will Japanese honeysuckle work to stabilize a hillside? Or is there any other suggestions you might have? Yeah, Mike, that's a great question, actually. So erosion control, hillsides. You know, we live in the mountains. And so even, even a flat, say the valley, you know, Ch- Chino Valley. When you see a, a monsoon rain hit that valley and you see a wall, a four-inch wall of water coming at you, going to the big Chino, it's an eye-opener. You want to hold your soil down. And so grasses are nature's way in the valley areas of doing that, whether it's a pampas grass, the big one, bear grass, which is a native, or just ground covery things, or ground cover cotoneasters. Uh, but Honeysuckle is probably at the top of the list. So it's a good choice, Mike. I, I think that's great. So there's several types of honeysuckle. And so they make ground cover varieties, but all honeysuckles can either climb up a trellis or over an arbor, or they can you take that bamboo stake out, fan out the, the tendrils or the, the vines, and just pin it down and start having it grow in the direction that you want. And it will, I mean, it will hold it solid. And so that's probably a good one. Another one that's sort of like that, the nativey one, it's called uh, a trumpet creeper when it's used as a ground cover. So it's got a great big red flower. It's called trumpet vine when it's grown up things. So if you're going up a rock wall or up a fence or up a, a, a pergola, up an arbor, it's called a trumpet vine. If it's on, as a ground cover, they call it trumpet creeper notorious for fast growth, big red flowers, and holding the soil down. It's another great choice. That's one. Mike, it's just a simple email. We, we can't go through. you got to come in and see us, and we'll walk you through and show you all the, the things that are. We have an entire section, knee-high and below shrub section, right next to the vine section. That's your people. You want to look at those because they're all good at holding down the earth, the ground, the gardens, keeping things in place. Mike, come see us. Okay. (laughs) Come on in. Come on in. (laughs) Next question is from Phil. I think we got time. He wants to know, can you top an arborvitae or will that damage it? Yeah. Can can you top arborvitae? So so I would say we can also put in that. It's actually a good question. Who'd that come from? Phil. Phil. Sorry, Phil. Uh, So Phil, you you can top arborvitae. You can top... uh, uh, Theodore Cedars, Colorado Cedar Spruce. Do you top things with a central leader? And will it recover? The answer is no. It's not going to. You'll lose its shape. So if it's just getting too big and it's up in the eaves, what choice do you have? It's probably above head high. So you wouldn't see the, the, the butchery as you top it. Uh, but is it going to regrow another, another, uh, ten, another leader going up? It'll take years. And so generally, those are not plants we hedge. We just let them grow and take their shape. They're easier to shape from the sides than they are at the top. But I understand if you've got to top this thing because it's just it's banging up against the window. It's just it's too close to some structure. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You just have to call it. I would say top it if you have to. If you don't have to, don't do it because it, it'll look bad. But if you have to, top it settle with it. See if you can live with that. And you know what? I know a really great garden center. I can sell you a different plant that's probably better for that space uh, That that if you can't recover. So I would say best not to if you can, Phil, but 
you have to go for it and see how it looks when you get all done. That's all the questions we've got time for. So Ken and Lisa Lane will be right back after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants in May are Vining the Kibia, Purple Robe Locust, Prescott Sunshine Geraniums, and Indian Hawthorn. Wind is no problem for this Indian Hawthorn. Rose-colored flowers cover this spring bloomer that often repeat blooms in fall. Dark blue berries adorn this compact bush that takes the wind and soaks up the sun like a native. Perfect for low-maintenance gardens with virtually no pruning ever. Every backyard should have at least one and only found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lay, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the top 10 questions of the week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 